Uh, this uh, presentation actually came about as a result of a program I used to do. Uh, we used to uh, train representatives for a couple of companies uh, in our wound center. And part of that would be uh, teaching them about basic wound care and where everybody's products fit in and just, just the basic uh, science of, of taking care of wounds and things like that so they'd have an idea. And then at the end of the program, in addition to doing some hands-on in our wound center, uh, we try to give them a little bit of our philosophy about uh, uh, how, you, how to be a representative. Obviously, I'm on the other side of the fence. I have never been on your side of the fence and probably never will be. Uh, but uh, the point is we were kind of showing our expectation of what we would like to see when you come to visit. And uh, so that's kind of been the basis for this program that we're doing for you today. And uh, we'll obviously take questions at the end. And if uh, there are too many bad questions, I'll just leave. That's okay. <laughs> but, uh, the, uh, the thing and the, the title that we put on this is what you can tell me or what, I, uh, what you can tell me to make me as a physician want to buy your product. And uh, this is pretty much the same as it's what you can tell me to make me want to use your product. Now that's really very simple from two points. Number one, you can tell me it cures everything within 48 hours <laughs> and be truthful. And you can tell me it's free. Okay? <laughs> Now, if we have those two things available to us, then our conversation should be over and we'll all go home and do something different. But uh, obviously, none of us have been able to accomplish that to this point. We know, and a lot of this has to do with uh, other things other than the, uh, the talk that uh, your representative gives us. Uh, the impression that you make is always important. Uh, sometimes, I can tell you, we've seen uh, our representatives that have come and given the first impression that uh, it's somewhat funny and much of a clown situation. Uh, do they wear the appropriate dress? Uh, you know, they could sometimes <laughs> see uh, reps that come like that, and, and sometimes they are almost uh, like this uh, when we look at them. And I would not say anybody here has the reps that do this, okay? Don't go home and start trying to pick out people that do this. Well, you haven't told us if it was inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we, we, we consider that inappropriate. Uh, this one uh, is a vote of my staff. Uh, when we see reps who are wearing uh, scrub suits, uh, that's probably a little over the top. You know, that's that's probably not a professional thing to do. Obviously, when you're in an operating room situation or where you're in a situation where blood and guts and pus and stuff is flying all over the place, fine. Uh, that's fine to wear uh, scrub suits if you like, but to uh, wear them as your daily dress, that's probably a little over the top as far as we're concerned. Uh, this is uh, not uh, the lady, but I'll tell you a story about a young lady about 15 to 20 years ago who came to visit us when we were doing vascular surgery. She came to our vascular surgery office to sell us something. My partner at the time and I still have absolutely no idea what she brought. But she came in and she had on a very revealing dress and she had on sunglasses. Now in Alabama, sunglasses are not a big deal. We see people with sunglasses all the time. She gets in and she takes her sunglasses off and sticks them right there. And uh, from that point on, we have no idea what she said. <laughs> <laughs> and as, as I said, it's probably been 20 years ago, and if you go see my former partner who's in Tennessee now, and you ask him about the sunglasses girl and what she came to sell, he will remember her, but he has no idea what she was selling. And so uh, first impressions and presentation is uh, important. We like the professional look. This lady is available for you if you would like. This is my daughter. Oh. <laughs> I'll tell you say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, she is a, uh, a professional uh, cook and uh, does uh, five cooking magazines. She's the test kitchen developer for uh, uh, five different cooking magazines. Can you imagine? She's that skinny and develops cooking recipes all the time. For those of you who might be uh, familiar with it, she does uh, uh, Paula Dean's magazine, if you're familiar with Paula Dean. All of the recipes in that magazine are Paula Dean, or are, are Rebecca's and not Paula Dean's. Believe it or not, Paula Dean's name is on the magazine, but they're all Rebecca's recipe. But that's what she does, but uh, she dresses very appropriately for her job, and we would encourage you to have everybody look at the professional look. The presentation, we're always happy to hear what everybody has to say, but uh, as you know, we need to have a time limit on those things. We like for everybody to be brief and to the point. And uh, if, if you continue to drag on and on and on, if it's not going to put us to sleep, it's going to agitate us that we're still uh, not getting back to our patients. So I would encourage 
everybody to get to the bottom line pretty quickly and tell us what you want us to know. We do want you to tell us what we need to know about your product. What wounds are best treated by your product? We realize that every product is not for every wound. And it's important for you to tell us when it is useful. We also want to know what your product does for the wound. Does it absorb drainage? Does it improve wound microenvironment? Does it stimulate even? What does it do? And uh, the answer is, well, if you put it on our wound, it's going to make the wound better. That doesn't really count, okay? We need to know pretty much what's going on with the wound. Most of us are getting sophisticated enough that we want to know about what the bottom line is as far as what's happening with their wound. So we want to know that. When is your product not recommended? Now, I know that might be a little bit uh, of an odd question, but to me it's just as important to know when a product is not indicated as when it is indicated. If you sell me a product and I want to put it on X wound and it's not indicated for that and I use it and it doesn't work, then I'm going to presume it doesn't work on anything. And so I would encourage you to remember we need to know when it's indicated, for what wounds it's indicated, and we will be very appreciative if you'll tell us if it's not indicated for that product or for that wound. And if you say, well, you know, we might lose some sales. No, you've got to be go up in our opinion simply because you told us the truth. And I think that's a very big issue uh, when we think about that. I would encourage you to save the science to last. Most everybody in the wound care business, treating wounds now, don't understand the science in the first place. Okay, we did a little test of uh, wound care personnel that are out in the field who actually do wound care around the country. And I presented some of that information today at our members meeting, and of the wounds, wound care exams that I gave, the average score was 55. Only 55% of the questions were answered appropriately, and that's by all comers, doctors, nurses, physical therapists, everybody. And so the knowledge about wound care is really very low. So I wouldn't really spend a lot of your time talking about molecules and cells and growth receptors. Most people have no clue what you're talking about in folk. And so I would suggest that you save that to the very last if someone is interested in doing that. This is something that may be very difficult, and it's just a, a tip I would have for you, is that try not to have all the supporting data for your science written by your marketing department. You'd be surprised how many times we see reps and they say, we've got the greatest product in the world. It's so cool, it'll heal anything. And they show me these papers and they're all written by the marketing department. Data on file at, data on file at, well, if your product is really that good, I think it needs to be published in the scientific journal, peer reviewed journal, and I would encourage you to do that. That really makes the science go up. Now, I'm not saying that there's not a role for your marketing materials, because a lot of stuff before it gets published is in marketing material uh, form. And so I would encourage you, though, if you can, do your best to have some scientific information about your product that's been in, in peer review journals. That will really uh, make your uh, evaluation go up. Now, when it comes to telling about the science behind your product, I think there are a few things that uh, we would encourage you to remember. One is that it's the story and not the science that sells the product. Now, that is a quote by Cheryl Treadwell, my wife. And you see that it says, wound care expert. She is the smartest wound care physician who's not a physician in this country. She has been doing this for many, many years. She comes to these meetings. She listens to all the presentations. She's gotten to the point now where several physicians who give presentations, she'll catch them afterward and says, uh-uh, you didn't say that last time. She will correct them and tell them where they've made mistakes in their presentations. So if I'm not around and you need to know something about wound care and you want to get it from us, call my wife. She knows, I promise you. <laughs> The ones of you who know my wife know that situation. But she has come up with that story in this quote, and I think it's a very good one. It's how the wound product that you're selling affects our patients and how much better it's going to make our patients. That's what's going to sell it, and not how many molecules it's going to change, how many proteases it's going to reduce, all of those things. And the other thing that you don't want to have happen is to have your rep proceed like this. 
There is nothing so frightening as ignorance in action. That's a great quotation for a whole bunch of different things. But uh, it's very important that you not get in over your heads when you're trying to talk about science. Most people you can fool, but there are a few of us that you can't. And it's really funny to me for a rep to come in and start going on and on about saying, you know, this product is this to the proteases and this to that and the other. And uh, I don't correct them. I just kind of ask leading questions to see if I can chase them down the path and see how far I can let them fall into that rabbit hole. But it's uh, always interesting to uh, realize that you, you need to tell the truth and not get above your, your pay grade, so to speak, with, when you're talking about science of wound care products.